sanctuary give it up your praise for the king of kings and the lord of lords for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endured to all generations good morning gardeners to god be the glory for all the things he has done I'm happy to be in church today. Yeah, it's good to see each and every one of you in the house today. It's good to see you on the scene and it's good to see those who's on the screen. Could y'all help me this morning and encourage somebody that's beside you and say, hey, cuz, hey, family. I want you to know That God is going to bless you. And then look at your other neighbor and say it forever. Yeah, yeah. Jason Nelson, Jason Nelson have a song out that's named uh, Forever. Yeah, Forever. One of them verses in there. Listen, old folks. Old folks, my folks. Yeah, they say, they say forever is a long time. And, and, and that's how long I love you. Forever. But is there anybody in here who know how long God been loving you? He's been keeping you and loving you. People is wishy-washy. People is sometimes. They, they, they'll unfriend you. They'll block you. They'll stop talking to you. But we serve a God, good God of mine, who say, I don't care if, you, if, if you're down. I don't care if you're up. I don't care if you're balling or if you're broke. God say he'll love you forever. Is there anybody in here want to give God a forever praise? If you're over 50, under 50, you ought to tell him I, I want to give God a praise because I want to let you know what it, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you didn't wake me up, you can't shit me up. Is there anybody in here feel like praising the Lord? Tell your neighbor to give me a little room because I'm having a flashback on just how good God been to me. Amen. Amen. Our morning, our morning scripture will be read from the 100 numbers of the song. 
reading out the King James Version this morning. This song is for someone that can't sing. <laughs> Amen. It said, you don't have to know an A clef from a G clef or C minors. Listen at what David says. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. O oh, ye lay, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep are his pasture. This is how you go to church. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And when you get here, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endured to all generations. This is the word of the Lord that may comfort the people of God. Ain't God all right? Let us pray. Oh, great and gracious God, we humble ourselves today to be in your presence. We realize there was nothing that we could have did to deserve it. But Lord, we thank you for being a loving God. Because we are debtors. We owe you, God. We had a debt that we couldn't have hope or pain, pain. But while we was doing our own thing, 10 and 20 and 30 long years, you send your son to die for us. And God, we say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us another chance, another opportunity to say thank you. Consecrate us now to thy service, Lord. By the power of grace divine, let our soul look up with the steadfast hope that my will be lost in dying. So would you draw us nearer? We tired of doing what we want to. We want to do what you want us to do. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for these, your people who's here on the scene, but we also thank those who's on the screen, those who's watching online. Lord, somebody need a miracle today. Somebody's in desperate need of a blessing. So would you bless right now? Now, Lord, we need to hear from heaven. We heard from you, Vine, at the elementary school, but we need to hear a word from you today. Bless everyone that's in that school system, oh Father. Be a courage, a good courage to them. Now, Lord, bless each one of us that's on the sound of my wee voice. Forgive us for our sin and give us another chance. So we can show you how much we love you. Protect our children, oh Father. As the summer days are coming. Be a fence around them. Now God, we don't know how long the deliverer will be. But while we wait on you, Father. Strengthen these old body. While we wait on you, Father. Strengthen these our mind. While we wait on you, Lord. Give us a to be good encouragement for we know oh father after a while and by and by coming into this church would be no more the preaching of the gospel will be over we want to be here you say well done thy good and faithful service you've been faithful over a few things but come up higher I'll make you ruler over many we pray this in no other name that matters 
but in Jesus name the one who can still turn water into wine the one who can still walk on water the one who can still uh, got all supply of our needs that's in heaven we pray that's in his pressure name we pray that all the people of God say amen When I woke this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I'm going to say that again. When I woke up this morning, I didn't have no doubt. When I look back over my life, and I don't have to go a long way. I don't have to go past a year ago. God has kept me. Not because of me, but in spite of me. Not because I've done everything right. Not that I said the right things, went the right places. But God kept blessing me anyway. It's because he loved me. That he looked past my fault. He saw my need. And on today, you're here by the grace of God. I just want you to have a minute to yourself with God in your own mind. And just think about where you could be right now. Then let's go a little deeper where you should be right now. The truth is, none of us should be here right now. Through various dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. But it was God's amazing grace that has kept us thus far. I'm excited about this word on today. As we've been going through the book of Nehemiah, I have been doing personal introspection of my own life. I've seen many broken down walls and burn up gates in my own life. I've seen my own self and the consequences of my action being in captivity by my own decisions. But I've also seen God's merciful hand. Rebuild, restore, renew, redeem, and reconcile me to himself. And so today, as we go into chapter 12, I pray that we can see the blessing of the Lord on today in our lives. Let us bow. Heavenly Father, we come now with our hearts and minds prepared to hear a word from you. Recognizing, God, that all things come of you, from you, and through you. Now, God, we ask that you would divorce us from the very cares of this world and permit us to be lured into the deep treasures of your word. Then, God, pull us up afresh. Give us something, oh God, that will allow us to be more like you. Lord, now I ask, God, that I be decreased, that you might be increased. Hide me now behind the cross. Stand up. Use me as a tool in thy right hand. God, allow me to express this word with clarity. God, give me the conviction of my, my belief. And as I stand, God, let me stand with all power of the Holy Spirit that those that hear the word might be planted on good ground in due season, that it might bear fruit, much fruit, and that that fruit remains. And then, God, for the downtrodden, those that are hurting right now, those that are confused, don't know what to do, those, oh, Heavenly Father, that need an encouraging word, encourage them on today. Strengthen them where they are weak. And then, God, we're going to be so careful to give you and you alone the praise. And we all in one voice agreed by saying amen. Amen. If you would, go with me to Nehemiah, that 12th chapter. Nehemiah, the 12th chapter, and I'll be reading four verses. They won't be concurrent, so I'll be reading verses 27, 30, 40, and 43. I'll be reading Nehemiah 12. 27, 30, 40, and 43. Amen? Amen. Verse 27 reads as follows. And the dedication, and at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out all of their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness both with thanksgiving and with singing, with cymbals, psalteries, and with harps. Verse 30 says, And the priests and the Levites purified themselves 
and purified the people and the gates and the wall. Verse 40 says, so the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God and I and half of the tribe of the rulers with me. 43 says, also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. Today I want to talk about being ready to have some church. Be being ready to have some church. You may be seated. We, we, we have watched these that were remnants of the exile come back into Jerusalem and realizing that in Jerusalem it had been abandoned, it had been dilapidated, it had nearly been destroyed. They looked around at a place that God himself had made covenant with the people and said this place, Jerusalem, the word Jerusalem meaning the place of peace would be for me a dwelling place. It would be the place well, my son himself would take the seat of David, signifying his kingship. Says that in this place, in Jerusalem, is where my name would be forever. But at the time, looking around Jerusalem and all of its issues and problems, it had become a reproach, a laughing stock to the nations around it because not only was it a city that didn't have walls, it did not have people. However, Nehemiah, under the inspiration of God, because his heart was broken after hearing the report of his brothers who had heard of those in exile, those returning back to Jerusalem, he, he goes to the king and says, King, I need some time off from the job. I got a work to do. You'll get that in a minute. I need some time off the job because I got a, a, a work to do. Let me let somebody in here know, some of you been going to your job every day and still haven't found your work. I'm going to help you in here. That, that, that's why when you go to the job, you can't stand to be there. That's why when you're at the job, it seems like you're not making any headway because it's not your passion. It's really not your purpose. It, it is helping give you provision for your table, but it's still not satisfying the inside man that, that really wants to have fulfillment as they give of themselves. And oftentimes, you got to see God for purpose in your life so that when you go to your work, you don't have to worry about it being a job. Every day I used to go into those schools, those elementary schools, because it wasn't a job, it was a work. It was something about developing the minds of children, keeping them protected, and being able to not only help them academically, but socially and spiritually, and stand in the gap at times when parents were not around, when they have hurt themselves to be able to provide a place of comfort and authority and rule and boundary, and then giving them the space to explore and discover and have anchor and thought and develop and grow and mature. It, it was not just a job, but it was a work. And it is a work that continues even to this day. And when you find your work, you understand you don't even really need a job. Well, it's quiet in here. Bob says your gift gonna make room for you. Some of y'all started what was called a side hustle that became your main thing. Because God himself gave you the desire of your heart by allowing you to do what you love. When you're doing what you love, it don't seem like it's so hard even when you got challenges. It's just something else to figure out to make it better. And I want to help you here in the church today that in your life right now, you may feel bogged down at a job, but the truth is God says, I got a work for you to do. 
That's what Nehemiah realized. I needed to leave my job so I could go do a work. And listen, the work wasn't easy because it was seen to be an insurmountable task because for over a hundred years, they had yet to rebuild the walls. They had brought back some exiles. They had already established the temple, but yet the walls had not been built. And I want to help somebody in our lives when we look at the dilapidation of our lives because we ourselves have broken fellowship and covenant with God not because God isn't a covenant maker and a covenant keeper it is because of our own fickle and our suspect attitude towards having faith in God which allows us to live in our carnal mind this carnal mind will make decisions that are contrary to the word of God and because of it we will experience those things in life that will not profit us but will provide us with grief and, and, and also depression and anxiety and these attitudes of anger and bitterness because we have refused to yield ourselves to the will of God. We, we have to get to a place where we want to yield ourselves to God's will. Nehemiah, when he went to take care of this business, he didn't have to worry about how he was going to pay for it because God had touched the heart of the king to give him everything he needed to accomplish the mission that God has sent him on. And let me help you in here. Anything God wants you to do, God is going to take care of it. God is not going to just give you the vision for it. He's going to give you the provision for it. He's not going to only make a way. He's going to provide for you everything you need along the way. I want to help somebody in here. You don't know how you're going to do it. All you got to do is trust that God is able to do anything but fail and there's nothing that he will withhold from you if you would have faith in him. Trust in his word and be courageous. Step out on faith. Come here Peter. Step out on that faith. Step out on that water. It's unsure. It don't supposed to hold you up but the water is just a manifestation that God has created. But if you believe that the same God that created the water and though it's unstable he can stabilize you in an unstable situation oh you don't think he can how many of you went through Hurricane Harvey but you still here it was unstable situation water everywhere things getting flooded out but God kept you anyway anybody went through the freeze it was very cold you didn't know what was going on but he kept you anyway you done been through a pandemic but guess what he kept you anyway he knows how to stabilize us even in unstable situations somebody job said I'm going to furlough you you can't come in I don't know how I'm going to pay you but God kept a roof over your head clothes on your back shoes on your feet food on your table God is able to do anything but fail you don't have to be worried about life as you are growing and developing and becoming all God called you to be because God himself has already preordained, predestined and designed you intricately to bring forth his glory and though others may not understand the pain of your story the agony of your past it has all been working together for the good for those of us who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose Nehemiah and them built that wall in 52 days. Had opposition, had obstacle, but in 52 days they accomplished what 100 years of going to and fro couldn't accomplish. I want to let you know that when God puts his hands on you, it's going to take all day for nothing to happen like it should. God himself, you could have had 40 years of messing your life up and turn your life around and give it to God and all of a sudden your next 40 years will be better than your first 40. Your latter days will be better than your former days. Talk to a few people who feel like I'm 60 and his life is all the way almost over with. I like the word almost because that means it ain't quite there yet. And if God given me any inkling of any time, of any moment, that means I still have a chance. And that's really all I need is a chance. Come here, Miami Heat. Everybody said Miami Heat was over with. I even said, I don't know. My good friend asked me, what you think? I said, man, I think Boston might take him. 
But but there are some people that was in a locker room talking together, saying, I don't care what everybody say. The media can say it. Our own fans can say it. But but it's about us and what we're going to do when we hit this court. It's going to determine the outcome. And I'm going to help somebody in here. Mama might say you can't do it. Daddy might say you can't do it. Friends might say you can't do it. Neighbors might say you can't do it. But if God be for you, he's more than a world again. You. And every now and then you got to be able to stand by yourself so you can behold the salvation of the Lord. How do you know that he'll come through right on time unless you're in a spot where you don't know what to do, how to do, but you look towards heaven and the God that we serve comes in right on time and you can look to the hill from with come at your help knowing your help came from the Lord which made the heaven and their hurt. After they built that dog on water, they built that thing. Matter of fact, they were being laughed at. Man, they were talking about, man, if them Jews, them little feeble little Jews, they go build this wall, even a fox go run up on the wall. Tear it down. Looked around and everybody didn't even want to work. You had a few nobles who felt they was too good to do the work. Let me help somebody in here. Everybody ain't going to do the work. There's going to be some people that's just going to be on the sideline. They're not going to put their hands to the work. But don't worry and focus on who's not going to work. You need to keep your focus on the work. And God in due season will bring all things to pass. People realize that after they built the wall, that we got to stay in this city. The city needs to be inhabited by a certain kind of people because this is a holy city. They realized they needed to hear the word of God so that the word of God could provide for them what they need to understand of God's requirements for them. And listen, that's why we come to church. That's why we gather because we want to hear what God has to say about the matter. I like what Dr. Rayford always says, we didn't heard from ABC. We done heard from BET, we done heard from CNN and YouTube and, and TikTok, and we done heard from everybody. But, but when we come into this place, we come to hear a word from the Lord. It is the word of the Lord, which is truth. And because it's truth, it allows us to realize where we're falling short, and it also lets us know where we need to be built up. It is like a a rubric or it tells us exactly what we need to do to achieve what God has promised for us. They say let us hear the word of God and they realize that they had been so far from the mark they began to cry and weep because they realized that it was them that caused the separation from God. Not because God left them but because they left God and they realize we need to humble ourselves pray and confess and come back to God with a whole heart our whole mind our whole soul with all we have we bring in our families we bring in our resources we bring in everything back to God so that God can bless us keep us and continue to make a way for us it surprised me after the pandemic so many people was pastor when you opening up the church some people that I've heard weeks from still haven't made it, not one Sunday. Yet I've seen them gallivanting all over the United States. I've seen them assembling themselves in various restaurants. I've seen them at outdoor venues and indoor venues. I've watched them have family get-togethers in the sort. And yet, when it comes to the house of prayer, they've come up with every excuse to why they can't come here. And yet, Monday through Friday, they can go to somebody's job. And they can sit there and still be in an environment that can still cause them a safety concern. But yet, they do it because it seems to benefit them. But let me let you know, there's no greater benefit than the coming to the house of the Lord and gather with the saints of God. After I done been through 
through a week of hell and high water about to lose my mind it's good to come into a place where I can hear a word that will help me become better than I was on yesterday that will remind me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world a place that I'm reminded that in my weakness his strength is made perfect in a place that I remember that he'll never leave me nor forsake me in a place I can remember he's my portion and he's my strength in a place that I can stand and be a witness that God has been better to me than I've been to myself after they got all that going on they heard the word they said we need to start doing what the word says then all of a sudden we get to this place but they realize we got the walls built. We got people that have chosen and have volunteered to come back into Jerusalem with their families and live. We're starting to become a society again in this holy city, but, but now we are ready to worship God in spirit and in truth. And now we are ready to have, have some church. The elements of church that we used to have is worship, fellowship, discipleship, Ministry and evangelism. We, we, we worship because we are planned. We are created for God's pleasure. We have fellowship because we are formed and made to be God's family. We have discipleship because we are created to become like Christ. And then we have ministry because we are shaped to go and serve and help someone else. And lastly, we have evangelism because we were all made for a mission. This is why we come to church. It's not just a Sunday worship. It is an overall plan of living, not only coming here, but when we're at home, when we're around our family and friends, when we're at our prospective places of work, whatever we're doing, these are to be elements of our living because daily we're becoming more trans form into the image of Jesus Christ. But there is a process involved. That, that, that's what that happened in the church. Uh, we got everything else going on but these elements. Church is becoming an um, a entertainment venue with, with strobe lights and fog machines. Yes, sir. It's becoming a place where praise dancers looking like they slight weight might be sliding up and down a pole on the night before. Oh, it's quiet. Well, preachers are no longer concerned with preaching the gospel, but self-help messages uh, that will ease and soothe your tickling ear and not challenge and confront you with the need to, to turn from sin and turn to God. Well, 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 the preaching has gotten so watered down that, that it's all about cliches and cute sayings and catchy titles that have no power, that do not convict your heart and make you look in the mirror of your life and say, I gotta do better than what I'm doing. This new preaching will make you feel like you're doing everything alright and that God is cool with it. But God is holy. He, he's a holy God. And he said those that, that serve him must serve him with, with spirit and in truth. And you can't do that defiled. Yeah, we're talking about defiled. I'm not talking about being born and seeing shaped in iniquity. I'm talking about in the fact that you have sin and you have iniquity and won't fall on your knees and confess your sin. He says if you confess your sin, he is just and he is faithful to cleanse you of sin and, and wash you of all your unrighteousness. That's why you got to thank God because in spite of the fact that I missed the mark and I fall short, I can still fall on my knees and cry out to him. And he says, everybody that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm going to get up out of here now. There are four words that need to manifest themselves in our lives. We need to manifest ourselves in our worship, in our families, and in our community. The first thing is preparation. Verse 27 is all about preparation. Preparation is, is an intentional positioning of yourself to do a task or do a duty. 
He said they were getting ready to dedicate or commit this wall of Jerusalem. He says, that, but they look for the Levites. We need y'all to come in here and sing. We need y'all to come in here and, and make a joyful noise. So they go to all the cities around Jerusalem that the singers had built and say, we need y'all to come put on the biggest, baddest concert you ever put on in your life. Don't, don't come in here with no one or two songs. Now we want you to bring your full repertoire. We, we need the best singers. We need you to come and be prepared that you might lead us in this worship. Listen, worship should never be haphazard. You, you got to prepare yourself to worship. Come on. I, I don't just run up on God no any kind of way. I, I recognize who I'm dealing with when I go to God. First of all, I settle myself. And I got to get myself under subjection and say, first of all, homeboy, you sure going like you got it all made. You sure going to God in a way like he, you can talk to him eye to eye and, and face to face. No, you need to humble yourself. You, you need to get yourself in a way that you go before him recognizing you don't deserve the opportunity to go to God for yourself. But because of Jesus Christ and the blood atoning work of Calvary and the love and extended towards us I have the right because I am now the imputed righteousness of God to go to him in relationship and say daddy I'm sorry I'm sorry that I did this and I did that and I said this and I wanted to do that and the truth is God while I'm praying to you right now there's still something in me that makes me want to cuss him or her out I still want to put them hands on him or her I'm still Still thinking of a master plan that's go in in a dead end. My mind and my spirit are constantly at war with one another. I need you to be my peace in the middle of this storm. Oh, I'm talking to some storm people who life is crazy right now. Winds are blowing in your life. Floods are rising in your life. Beating you all upside your head of faith. You trying to stand firm, but as soon as you stand up, some pushing you back, some pushing you down, some holding you back. But I'm so glad that I got a God who knows how to deliver, who knows how to set me free. For who the Son has set free, He free indeed. You gotta have some preparation. You, you, you don't just start reading the Bible, pray. Lord, direct me in your word. Show me what I need to learn. You don't just come and sit in here and say, well, what the pastor go preach? Now, Lord, get my mind and my heart ready to receive whatever he getting ready to say so that I can have something that I can live by. When they sing, God, it ain't about my favorite song. This is not 97.9 or 90.9 where you make a request. But God, whatever the musician does, bless his hands, bless his mouth, bless his direction, bless the singers. That's what they say. Go get those singers and tell them, come on and prepare yourselves to prepare to worship God in spirit and in truth. Not only do you have to have preparation, but you got to have dedication. Your dedication, you... You got to be committed. Look what it says. 30 says, And the priests and the Levites purified themselves, purified the people and the gates and the wall. First of all, talking to the preachers, the singers, those that lead in worship, say the first thing they did was purify themselves. Come on. They were deliberate in preparing themselves to be vessels used by God. Before I come out here, I pray. I don't just come out here just haphazard. I done prayed before I even hit here. And then there are times I stand up here and I pray again because I realize I need the help of the Lord to stand in front of you and deliver what God would have me say. I, these musicians, I know it might look easy because they plan, but they need the Lord to guide their hands and guide their feet and their mind as they're doing their job. And I want to help you in here today. You can't come in to the house of prayer if you have not at a prepared yourself and committed yourself to being purified 
they recognized that in the holy city there could be no defilement of those that were going to give service to the house of God. So first, it starts with the leadership. They purified themselves according to what God called purification in that day. Go to the book of Numbers, there are some outliners on how to purify. And we imagine they went through those processes as prescribed in the word of God. Then they turned the attention to the people. They say, listen, we're ready to lead you, but, but you got to be in a unique space to follow so that your hearts and minds are prepared to receive what God says and for you to become a participant in what we're doing. Then once they got through with the people, they purified everything else around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these, these pews get prayed over all the time. You, when you sit down, somebody done prayed on that pew. Oh yeah, yeah I ain't got it. Uh, when these pews was bought, they were dedicated to the church. When these windows were put in, they was dedicated to the church. And, and ever since then, every now and then, I walk through here and I touch every pew. And I pray on every pew. And everybody that was sitting in that pew, that God would bless them. That God would hold them. That God would keep. It's not just me that's purified. It's not just you as the people, but our whole environment. We touch doors. And we touch walls. We stand and walk around the grounds just so that you'll know that this place has been given and separated for the purposes of God consecrated that God might get the use of not everything but everybody that enters therein they, they, they were ready to prepare and dedicate themselves and the next thing is is you got to have Thanksgiving yeah, yeah. So, so, so the two companies, listen, uh, keep reading down, you'll see that the half of one company goes one way up the walls. And then another company goes up the other way, and they meet at the house of the Lord. They, they, they walking around the gates that they had built. Remember what the enemy said? That, that them walls wasn't going to be worth nothing. They were going to be feeble. A fox was going to be able to go up on it and tear it down. But here they are. Men, women walking around a wall, stepping on the wall that they built with sure steps, praising God. Because the thing about it, if God allowed you to build it, God knows how to sustain it. I want to help somebody in here today that you done had shambles in your life and God done let you remake and rebuild your life. And if some people want to keep talking about what you used to be and how you used to act and where you used to go, people that won't let you get past your past. But aren't you glad that you don't serve a God who holds on to your past but he keeps pushing you toward your future he keeps putting something in your face to remind you don't look at those things that are behind you but keep on striving keep on reaching keep on going for the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ keep straining your way to be away from what you used to be and apprehend and take hold of what God created you to be Come on. they say we gotta we gotta have some some thanksgiving. That, that's your attitude. If you're going to have some church, you got to come in here with the right attitude. Man, listen. Forget what bad that happened. Why don't you start coming here thinking about what good has happened? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to help somebody in here. It's the old half, the glass half empty, half full. Uh, the fact is, if you walk in, you got a whole lot to thank God for. First of all, you got a reasonable portion of health and strength. And the only reason you know it is because he woke you up this morning. And he started you on your way. If you, if you don't have nothing else to have a good attitude about, is that you woke up this morning and he started you on your way. Then he had nerve enough to wake you up and everything around you was all right. 
No thieves broke in on you last night. No, nobody took your stuff last night. God just kept you anyway. And even though you might not have felt your best last night, somehow this morning, he woke you up. Yeah, that back still hurt. Yeah, them ankles still hurt. Yeah, old Arthur still be visiting here and now. But I know how to deal with Arthur. Take me to the ibuprofen. Tell God thank you and keep on moving down the line. I may not be kicking high, but I'm still kicking. I'm going to keep on keeping on because God has given me breath in this old feeble body. He's given me a mind that I can still think. He's given me a heart that I can still feel. And if I can't do nothing else, Else, I can open up my mouth and from the fruit of my lips just say Lord thank you thank you for today thank you for eyesight thank you that my heart beats thank you that I'm able to breathe thank you that I'm able to feel thank you that I'm able to know and understand I just thank you for every good and perfect gift comes from God I'm not thankful just because I received something material. I'm grateful, but I'm not as thankful. I'm thankful that in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my being. Say, say man, we, we ready to party. We came in here with thanksgiving on our lips. We came in here ready to praise him. And then, then you got celebration. Say, on that day when they gathered together, they was ready to celebrate. And that's the heart of worship right there, celebration. You, you, you haven't truly worshiped God till not only are you ready to tell him thank you, but you're ready to show him how much you are thankful. Say on that day, they offered great sacrifices. I don't know what has happened to us as a people. But within one or two generations, We've become self-centered, self-grandizing. We've self-appointed ourselves as bosses and, and all of this craziness that we love to propagate, especially on social media. When the truth is, everybody is still struggling day to day. Everybody is still having issues as they're growing in grace, whether it's by themselves or with their spouse or, or with their children, with life's conditions. All of us have a daily struggle that we're all getting into and going through. I don't care that you took a vacation last week. That's good. But when you come back, the same hell you left is going to be here when you get back. And if you haven't taken time to purify your mind and get your heart fixed and your mind regulated, when you come back, you won't be in any better shape than you were when you left. It's going to require some celebration though. Celebration says, I'm here and God, I thank you for what you've given. And I don't mind sacrificing to you because what I realize is everything I give you, you already own. See, the problem with us in giving is because we think it belongs to us. When you think it belongs to you, then your attitude shows through because it shows your selfishness. It shows your self-reliance and self-assurance that you believe that you can do better with what God has given you of his that belongs to him than he, you can following his direction to prosper you according to what he has already said. He says, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be need in my house and prove me now if I will not open up the window of heaven, pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. We will find every reason why giving God 10% is ludicrous. I got bills, I got a card note, I got... You do know that if God takes his breath from you, your car go stay here, your house go stay here, Everything you have that you think belongs to you go stay here. Even this old wretched body that's going back to the dust 
from whence it came. I don't care how you go get it cut on, how you add this, take this away. I don't care if you tighten it up, loosen it up, pick it up, slide it over. It don't matter. In the end, it's going to all lay down in the image of death and go back to the dust from whence it came. I don't care how many pair of Gucci shoes you have, how many Louis Vuitton bags you own, how many cars you drive, where your house is, how many houses you have. When you die, everything you accumulated that belongs to him, it's going to stay right here with you. And the only thing you're going to take with you is your soul. So what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange or swap out? for his soul. We done swapped out our soul for a little jelly roll, a little morsel of bread, a little right now fame, a little right now money, but I'm working on the eternal house. I'm working on something that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. I I'm working on something beyond what I see with my eyes. I'm working on the eternal weight of glory that will never fade away. That's why I'm ready to have some church. That's why I'm ready to get back to the business of having church. I'm ready to come back and fellowship. I'm ready to come back and evangelize. I'm ready to come back and disciple. I'm ready to come back and worship in spirit and in truth because without the church in my life, my life would be void. It would have no meaning. Without the church in my life, there's not a place I can come and lay my head on the altar and stretch forth and prostate myself and cry out to the Lord but he had a church it's no other place that I can go and meet some folk that have been going through what I've been going through that's not gonna look at me strange because I'm hurting because I'm going through because I have problems because I'm afflicted and affected by the ills of this life I got a few brothers and sisters that are testify to me that the same God that brought them out will bring me out. I'm so glad he gave me a family. Not a family of my blood, but a family of his love that'll pray for me, that, that'll stay with me, that'll lift me before him and say, Lord, bless the pastor and his family. I don't know what they going through, what's going on, but God keep him in the hollow of your hand. I'm glad for the church, but I'm glad for you, the people, because without the people, this place it's just a hollow cavity with four walls but when the people of God assemble together under one roof the Bible says when they begin to celebrate when they begin to worship they were heard afar off that's why the Bible says let everything that has breath praise the Lord I'm going to say it again let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Some of y'all might as well praise him right now. All that you done went through, all that you done had to go through, you ain't had no job, but God blessed you. You've been addicted to substances, but God kept you. You've been promiscuous, could have had AIDS, could have died, but God kept you. Been through a bad divorce, but God kept you been through abusive relationships but God kept you death to found his way in your very own home but God has kept you you didn't have no money and your change was strange but God provided a way let everything that has breath praise the Lord or oh, you might not want to praise him but I'm going to praise him especially for on that Friday night when Jesus goes to Calvary and he hangs there he bleeds and he dies for where there is no shedding of blood there is no remission of sin but he died for you and me but that's not the end of the story he was put in a borrowed tomb and on that third day he got up with all power in his hand and 
that's why I'm glad my brothers and sisters because he got up let me know I'm going to get up and you ought to get up right now and you need to get up on your feet right where you are and you ought to thank God right now you see how you got up that's because God gave you strength you see how you got up that's because God is permitting you and you ought to tell God thank you right in this place thank you Lord for giving me hands to wave thank you Lord for giving me a mouth to speak thank you Lord for giving me eyes to see but thank you God for saving my soul I'm so glad that trouble don't last always that one of these days when this life is over we go fly away I don't know about you but I know that one day he's gonna come back and receive me to himself that where he is there I am also but until he come again I'm ready to have some church I say I'm ready to have some church my brothers and sisters I hope you're preparing your heart and mind to have some church I hope that you're preparing yourself that you're dedicating yourself I, I pray that with thanksgiving in your heart you're preparing to celebrate when we're able to do that not only will the worship services work well but when you walk up out of here you'll walk about this place thanking God you'll walk about this place with joy in your heart I like what it says it says they had great joy that's a superlative that, that's great joy Listen, not just joy. The old folks would say unspeakable joy. Joy down in my soul. Sweet. Beautiful. Soul saving joy. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Joy down in my soul. When you got joy, you don't worry about being happy. Ha happy happens with happy demons. But joy? The New Testament writer says, I count it all joy. Even when I fall into divers temptations, that, that let me know I'm crazy enough that even when things don't look good, I know it's going to be all good. Even when it don't appear to be right, I know the one who's able to keep me from falling. I know the one who will present me faultless. Because of it, I come up in this place ready to have church. And not only ready to have church, ready to be the church. Amen. Somebody thank God in his house on today. It is our prayer today that you accept the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, before it's everlasting too late. We always do this and we offer Christ to you, my brothers and sisters, because only through Christ, through faith in Christ, you can receive the blood atoning work of Calvary. Listen, the thing about it is God isn't asking you to be perfect. He's asking you to have faith in him. He wants you to know more about him. You, you, when you first fell in love for the first time, um, that heart go pitter patter. Um, when you're in love, you want to talk to him all day. We was young. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Fall asleep on the phone. Just. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. When you're in love, everything cute. The way, the way you chew is cute. The way, the way you blink your eyes. I ain't never seen nobody's eyes blink like yours. You, everything. The, the way your eyebrows move. I ain't never seen no eyebrows move like yours. Everything. He, the way you smell, even when you get through work. Ooh, you still, I just don't know. It's something. Y'all know what I'm talking Everything is just, oh my God. But over time, that joker used to chew cute till you start hearing them, st them sounds. And you start saying, you, you got to eat like that? And why are you always blinking your eyes like that? Same thing you thought was cute after a while becoming an annoyance. Or y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You go, okay, I hear somebody, yeah. That snoring was cute the first two times y'all was spending the night with each other. 
Especially because you wasn't married. Oh, that, everybody looking around. I forgot we in church, y'all did everything right, y'all. Nobody never fornicated, nobody ever, my fault. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking about me. I, I haven't always been right. Yeah. But God still loved us. And this is the demonstration of love through Christ. He knows you mess up. But, but he's saying it's not about you messing up. It is you keeping on messing up. He says sooner or later, you ought to get tired of messing up. Amen. And you want to seek a way where you can live a life, listen, and can stand before him and just say, God, I thank you for your grace and mercy. And whatever you allow, I'm cool with because I know you're going to take care of me. That's what coming to Christ is about, sanctification. And it's going to happen until you die. Listen, there's some people can tell you, they 70 years old, been going to church, and they still working out some stuff. So it's a process. Don't get discouraged in the process because you haven't figured it all out. Just keep coming to God, and he'll work it out. You can come to God just as you are, however you are, whatever you're going through, and God himself will change your life, transform your thinking, and bless your life. Heavenly Father, as we come among one another in front of you, God, we come just thanking you for life. We thank you, God, for eternal life through Jesus Christ. We pray now for our brother on our left and sister on our left or right, asking God that you would touch them in a mighty way. Lord, you know them to the inner part of their selves. For God, you even know the number of hairs on our head. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters even now that if they haven't made you their choice, we pray now, God, the Holy Spirit will prick them at their heart and sear their conscience that they might know that they need to come to you while you might be found, while the blood is still running warm in their veins. Then, God, I thank you for these, your saints, that you are perfecting those, God, who are going through various situations and circumstances. We know everything is in your hand. So, God, I trust and we trust and lean, depend on you, knowing, oh, God, that you will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We thank you, God, for this day, this church service, and, God, as we prepare our hearts and minds to give to you, God, let us be in consideration of all you've blessed us with. Let us remember this church as our stewardship, and then let us remember that all things come from you. So what we're giving is just in obedience to your word. We thank you for your promises connected with our giving, and we ask, oh God, that you would prosper us according to your divine right hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. Amen. As we are preparing, we want to prepare ourselves to give. If you need an envelope, you can raise your hand and our usher will bring you an envelope. We thank you all for your gifts. Um, those of you who want to give electronically, you can go right there to the Cash McGarden application. I hope you've downloaded our app, Cash McGarden's MBC, and you can go there at the bottom. There's a little heart tab that says Give Today. You press Give Today. And push pay comes up and you can give accordingly however God places on your heart to ministries, to the general fund, uh, to various things in the church. You can give right there. You can set up recurring giving where it automatically comes out or you can do a one-time giving. But you can go right there to Cash McGarden MBC and you can go on Android or on your Apple and you can find those in your uh, app stores. We want to make sure that we are being uh what uh, as vigilant as we can in our giving we have things that we want to do but it is us the people assembled us who make these things happen so today i pray that as you give you give from your heart and you give knowing that god himself will adequately supply all your needs according to his riches in glory worship through giving Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Text KGMBC to 77977 or 
KGMBCAPP to 77977. To give through our website, log on to www.cashmeregardensmbc.org. To pay through Zelle, the payee is kgmbcfinance at gmail.com. To pay through Cash App, cash tag Cashmere Gardens MBC. If you would like to send a love offering to our pastor, cash tag Pastor E-L-D. Our mailing address is 4302 Cavalcade Street, Houston, Texas, 77026. Stay connected. As we get ready to leave, I pray today that God continues to bless each and every one of you. Uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you um, that we've come today to worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, these under the sign of my voice, Lord, you know what they need before I ask. But God, I pray today that you will bless their going out and their coming in. Not only that, God, that you will strengthen them for the task ahead this week. Pray, God, that you will keep them protected from all hurt, harm, and danger. Protect their finances. Protect their romances. Protect all that they have going on in their life. And then, God, let them dedicate themselves to you in service. Let them give richly of themselves to you. And then, God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will use them mightily in service. That you will manifest your wisdoms and their actions daily. That not only that, they have an attitude of gratefulness and thanksgiving but in all things God we pray you be glorified we ask that you hold Cashman together God that you continue to grow us together in love and in all things God we pray that we lift you up and be found as a church without spot or wrinkle it's in no other name but Jesus we declare it is done and we all agreed by saying amen why don't you look at me while I bless you now may the grace of God the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest may it rule may it abide with us now and forevermore and we all all said amen hey look at your neighbor look to your left or right and say I love you and there's nothing you can do about it but love me back and what do we always say here at Cashmere a better me makes a better us I love you go in peace we thank you for worshiping with us here in the garden here in the garden until we Till we meet again We will be praying for you We will be praying for you And We'll see.